Hey guys, Table here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Japanese destroyer strategy. Got a game in the Udachi Tanaka. That's the new commander, old commander Helsinger. I'm pretty sure Helsinger was in the pilot seat in this game. We switched him up because Tanaka's base trade, far superior, increased the torpedo damage um, versus enhanced the smoke in some way that I can't even remember. I think it increases the side of the, pu the puffs, the size of the puffs or whatever. So. Not that big of a deal. We'll actually see some disengagement uh, play here, but the smoke enhancing it, never bad, but not nearly as good as increasing the torpedoes. And now that Tanaka has access to the radio locator uh, perk that they a lot of the commanders just got, uh, he is now the top dog. So, uh, before we jump too deep into this game, I want to give an update on the Hunt for 20k subscribers. Doing a great job. You guys have been uh, slamming that subscribe button around. Quite a bit in the last few days here. Appreciate that. Once we get to the 20k, uh, then we'll get some prizes uh, given to us from Wargaming. Thinking tiers 4, 5, 6 premium ships most likely. Other goodies, you know, a lot of times we get some crates, maybe some camels. And they said depending on when uh, we actually hit this, maybe something even a little bit more special than we're even expecting. So we'll see what happens uh, in terms of that, but I know we're going to have some good goodies to give away, and that's going to be for subscribers of the channel only. So if you enjoy the content and you want to make it easier to find, please uh, consider subscribing. Appreciate it quite a bit to everyone who has done that. So this game, some of you guys might be sitting back there. By the time it's over, you might come to the conclusion that we've been experiencing some frustration throughout the duration of this match. I can assure you at no point in time... <laughs> Do we uh, get frustrated whatsoever? In fact, we're calm, cool, and collected the entire match. Keep that in mind. Note the base. Briefly being captured by red and now contested. That's a clue we need to be paying attention to, especially in these early uh, kind of collisions between these destroyers. When both are converging on the caps, that's usually a common opening play. You want to be reading these clues, these environmental clues, and is the base being contested? That's one of those clues to pay attention to. Once we knew that, uh, then we kind of zone torped uh, basically a gap that they'd be commonly parking by. A lot of times they'll sit on either side of that big island, but first pops up the Sashio. We got better guns than the Sashio, not really worried about fighting him. He drops the smoke, disengages his buddy, Akatsuki, behind him, who, uh, you know, he's got pretty good guns, as, you know, roughly as good as we do. Those two combined can cause some problems. So we drop the smoke here. Then we disengage. We pull backwards. You can either go straight away from them, you know, how we're currently positioned, or we can go 180 degrees, which is what we're going to elect to do here. That's designed to dodge torps, okay? Usually these players, when they see us, uh, if they're doing it well, they'll fire a salvo, and then quick with their main guns, then they'll quickly launch the torps kind of randomly in the direction we're roughly going. Rarely would they fire them behind us like this. Now... This caught me off guard. This is why we're broadside here. I had to slow down. Very, almost got blown up there. I'm assuming they were torping ships behind us. And we're going to see that happen on both sides of the ball in this game, okay? But you got to be very, very careful, especially as the destroyer player who's probably not being spotted a lot of the time. If you're in front of your friendlies or you're around them uh, and the other destroyers might be launching torps at them, you might accidentally get hit by them. Okay, so we've seen one example on our team. We might see that later. Uh, but what's going on here now? We're not running away. We're not saying to ourselves, man, uh, we got two destroyers over here. We just need to get out of here. No, we're dealing and trying to counter. We're dealing with and trying to counter the enemy destroyers at all times as a destroyer player. We're here to capture bases. We're here to counter enemy destroyers. How we do that is going to depend on what kind of of a destroyer we're in and because we're Japanese destroyer torpedoes our main thing kind of waited behind that island for just a moment to get these torps back up Sashio backing up here shoot to disengage or disable the engine what you want to do is pop that engine there catch him dead in the water and he gone that's you that's a set play that you want to try and go for luckily he did get the right hand one anyways but he almost dodged that salvo but if you do knock out that engine even if they repair it right away it usually slows them down just enough to guarantee the hit so that's kind of a play you want to practice uh, launching the torps and then trying to catch that destroyer dead in the water uh, you saw the battleships to the south shot uh, we were getting spotted by the Akatsuki not concerned about the Akatsuki we already saw his torps a moment ago uh, but we were concerned with the fact that he was spotting us because we shot which is fine again we're not threatened here you can see 
But because this guy down here had a shot at us, we actually took some wicked damage. And I think his buddy down there might have even got a shot as well. So that's why we're trying to use these islands as cover. We're keeping them in between us and the main gun threats. Bismarck, I mean, if the secondary start chewing us up, that's a problem. Main guns, the closer it gets, the bigger the threat those are. Um, we're pinging Helena here because I would like the option to shoot this thing. Uh, I'm trying to set him on fire. He's getting a little close to comfort here. This is kind of an interesting aspect of this game. Now we're about to capture the base. That's goal number one. That's We need to do that because they already got A. They got D. That's two caps. We got B. That's one cap. We need this cap here to at least tie up the income. If we don't, score runs up. It becomes harder and harder to win. But now what do we do? A lot of times, you know, if this Bismarck's parked way back in the moon, uh, we'll just go ahead and sail off and go with something more useful. But the Bismarck's challenging the cap. I think he might even be pretty close to on it. And we got that Akatsuki running muck. We don't know where he is. So we kind of threw those torps down there at the Bismarck. He's scraping the side of the island. So unfortunately, he kind of slows him down, slows himself down uh, inadvertently, most likely. We got this island between him and, him and us. So we uh, go ahead and fire there. Trying to hit the... Trying to light him on fire, and what's this? He got one as well. We got the Akatsuki, and that's what we were talking about earlier, and that's a good example of it. If we're sailing around here, and frankly, when I'm playing this game, I don't think that Akatsuki's anywhere near here, because last time he, we saw him, he was disengaging the other way, uh, but he went near his teammate, who he should be expecting that we're likely to be torping. Uh, we are a Japanese destroyer, after all, and he is a battleship. We go together like, uh, you know fill in the blank with two things that go together i don't have any good examples uh at the top of my mind here but nevertheless you know that's just another reason that you want to make sure you're paying attention to that and if you are in that area you got to be ready to react so drop the smoke there that's an that's an accident that's a bad play you can see we hit it just as the same time we did this engine boost i was thinking about immediately gunning over towards a trying to find that other destroyer uh, but then the Richie goes broadside of the Bismarck, point blank range, and gets blown up. So now I'm like, okay, well, I can't count on this Iowa, who's been basically on our version of the moon for most of the match, and then the Bism or the Richie, who just killed himself. Uh, now we can't really leave here. Okay, we've won this cap. I'm spending a lot of time over here, and you want to win these sides quickly. Uh, so this is getting on my nerves when I'm playing this game. It's being frustrating. And the fact that they're almost about to flip this cap back and go to a three cap to one advantage is very uh, frustrating to me. So we're actually getting pretty close here, losing sight of our distance, and we're actually going to get ourselves spotted. I was trying to get on the edge of this base, force him to come in towards me, and then present the Iowa broadside. But I got a little bit too close there. Secondary started going off. We don't shoot our guns. If we shoot our guns here for 20 seconds, our view range expands. And even if we get out of detection range which we have now uh we still have you know another 15 seconds or so we'll we'll be spotted we got ships to the southwest of us that could shoot us and the bismarck secondary's main gun dual threat we're probably dead if we shot there so we always kind of saying japanese destroyers don't shoot often enough that's a situation where there's no benefit of shooting what are we going to do get 500 damage and then get killed not a good trade so anyway uh now we got the york closing in German destroyers, or no, sorry, German cruisers, especially the higher tier ones, York, uh, Hipper, Prince Eugene, great sonar, very dangerous. Iowa almost blocks the torps. I think I don't know if he was trying to ram and he missed, or uh, he was trying to dodge a ram, I'm not sure, but he almost blocked the torps. We did get the Bismarck off there, and now the threat to sea is largely mitigated at this point in time. You can see we're up multiple ships. Uh, we're barely up on the score, though. This is because they've done a much better job controlling the caps than we have uh, throughout the match. Usually the guys that are doing a better job playing the caps in domination mode will win the game far more often than uh, not. So if you're on a team where they ignore the caps, which you will be from time to time, you're going to lose that game. That's pretty much a given. Uh, here, we'll see how the game develops, but so far Red's been doing a better job with their uh, game strategy overall. So now we got a destroyer on the loose. Twisting Track is suggesting York, who's about seven kilometers away. York kills the Iowa, I believe, or he's about to. <laughs> the Iowa's still on sea, uh, so spoiler alert, but he is about to kill him. And then that'll basically give him more or less unobstructed access to sea. 
I'm considering going back there, but do I want to push into a York? It's a, basically a one or two shot Udachi. No, I certainly don't want to do that. Unless I'm forced to do that, I'm not going to do that. Uh, we don't know where the what's going to end up being a Fletcher, full health Fletcher is. I'm not sure where that is. I don't know if I've looked at the roster. Uh, looking at this Benson over here, he's been bouncing off of this island uh, that he's been pointing at. I don't know if he put the controller down and buffing the Dewey. Grabbing a snack, checking his phone. I don't know what's been going on. But now he's starting to disengage from the island that he's been dancing around. And needs to go to A. Uh, that, that's for sure what he needs to be doing here. You can see the Fletcher now on B flipping that. So they're attempting to maintain a 3 cap to 1 advantage. Great idea since that's uh, really how they've been maintaining control this game. He's been maintaining control of the caps. Uh, Benson does not go to A. He wants to come down here and then he's just kind of going around the cap it looks like so I'm very confused by the decision making there uh, but we push into this cap for a couple reasons number one we got to stop the accrual points over here we know they're about to flip B and then of course as we are thinking this they actually do begin to do that uh, so we stop that and then we do get the Colorado there that is a good play you know Torpin battleships it's kind of the joke with these Japanese destroyers that's all they want to do in that case, I think that's a pretty strong play there because, number one, we will get this cap now. We've gone from stopping any points being accumulated to, in 40 seconds, we'll be getting income from it. Uh, but by removing that battleship, we've removed the distraction. A lot of players in this game, it's above 50% of the players, they certainly don't look at the map, and usually they'll zoom in, and they won't zoom out until whatever they're looking at is dead or they're dead. Uh, so, you know to kind of clear their minds and show them the fact that, hey, you got a one-shot broadside York that is strategically far more valuable than a Colorado parked in the moon doing nothing. Uh, and by the way, the York's closer to you, so you can actually probably hit it. We have to show them that that target exists by killing that target that's distracting them. So a lot of players, new players, I'm not trying to be too critical here, but... Uh, they'll see the battleships. They're like, I can probably hit a battleship. I'm just going to keep shooting that. We go ahead and kill them just so they can get their minds clear. So we're up 100 points now, uh, but they've got B. Where are they going to go? Take a moment. Pause the video if you don't know. Think about it for a moment. Where is that destroyer going to go? Uh, if you don't know, he's going to go to C because now they definitely need <laughs> to outnumber some caps and they're going to need at least another kill. We're up 100 points, so if they sink a battleship, we'll be tied. Now that he's on the cap, uh, they're actually going to begin gaining again because we're only accruing one cap's worth of income. They got two currently. Uh, but if everyone on our team rushes him, and they should know he was going to C, then they can shut him down, no problem. I'm going to come over here just as an insurance. Uh, watching this back a few times, I've gone back and forth tonight thinking to myself, was this the correct play? Because I got twist and track, I can help fight this guy. And the criticism I'm... You know, levying on my team, you know, you should know where he is, go for him. Uh, that does apply to myself as well. However, we only have 2k health. If the Benson goes down, let's say he gets torped, I rush in there, Fletcher wrangles me to the ground here. Uh, meanwhile, they're on the cap. Well, they probably win the game at that point in time. So by coming over here, we're going to guarantee once again that we have background points generating. Uh, and at this point in time, it'll be an advantage because... They're going to chase him off a C, in which case we'll maintain a cap lead at that point in time. Or if he stays on there, uh, we should maintain a lead in terms of the points. Because they won't be generating points from C, we'll be getting points from A. So complicated decision making here. Again, you can make the case I should be going towards C. I think just due to the fact that we've been battered around. We've lost a lot of our HP, which is kind of playmaking currency. We don't have a lot of that playmaking currency left to be making aggressive plays. So luckily now, you know, if the Benson goes down here, they flip C and then the guy gets loose or torps the battleship. We could still lose this game, still contested. But the support ships, the shores, the other battleship, they're turning around, they're going into C. That's the correct play. Aggressively push this Fletcher, uh, take him down, and destroyer v destroyer fights usually come down to support ships. They don't have support ships on red, of course, but our support ships closing in uh, sh shortening the distance those shells need to travel and they're piling on the damage you can see the Fletcher's going down we're going to try and get the crack in here as they're chasing them around the island not going to happen though our team's going to kill them great job turning around and closing out the game by the teammates so 
a little confused on what they needed to do early on, but they did figure it out at the end. So that's a look at the Udachi for you. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. we got lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys, and see y'all later. Peace.